Welcome to the Building on a Budget video series. In this series of videos, I will help you choose which boxes you will need to build a competitive list for the keyword of your choice. Now, each of these videos is focused on a specific faction. So obviously watch the one that is associated with the faction that you are interested in. Then of course, we'll go through each keyword and I'll give you which boxes that I think are good starting boxes for that keyword. Now, the goal of each of these sets is to make a competitive list with some flexibility if possible. But also keep in mind, we are on a budget, so that definitely changes some of the choices that I would suggest to somebody that could just buy the entire faction, of course. So we're going to focus on trying to buy ideally two or three starting boxes, and then I give you suggestions on how to expand from there and what boxes I would recommend. Now, each of the lists that I give you tend to focus on that keyword and good versatile models. I tend to avoid taxed in models and I tend to avoid out of faction models that are within that keyword. Now, obviously, if the model comes with the master box, then I'm not so worried about that. But I avoided models that you have to buy an out of faction box and get a bunch of out of faction models just for that specific model more often than not. Now, there are some exceptions to that rule just because the power of that specific model is just really needed to make a list very competitive. But if I could avoid doing that, I definitely did so just for budgetary reasons. Now, of course, these are all my preferences. A lot of people will argue a lot of these. And when I submitted these to the public at large, there was a lot of debate as to which boxes were better or worse but I tried to adhere to these four principles when in doubt. So everything I suggest here, you can always take with a grain of salt and you should do your own research if you're not sure about it. Now, as far as the pricing, I use everything from the weird store and I'm also not accounting for any older boxes, no M2E or M1E versions of the models because you may be able to find those, but not everybody will be able to find those. So everything is based on the M3 boxes primarily. Of course, if you can find the older boxes or find individual models, you of course can get quite a deal and start your keyword a lot more cheaply if you want it. Now, as far as the actual list, it's essentially I have them sectioned off by colors. The green models are, or the green boxes I should say, are the ones that you will need to start the list. You need these to make a full 50 soul stone list. And these are the ones I think are the best picks. Obviously the first box is always the master box because you'll need that model on its totem. And then I suggest I what I think is probably the best box to help fill the master box and make a 50 soul stone crew. In some cases it's more than just one model just because you you didn't have enough models to make a 50 soul stone list. In some cases others it's just it really really helps to have a couple other options as the case may be, because maybe the box models are not that good, and I really don't recommend taking those in some cases. The yellow ones are the secondary purchases. These generally really increase the power level and give you a lot of good options to expand this crew or just make it really tuned. So these are the ones I would definitely recommend next. These are an order of purchasing as far as my preference. You can obviously get them in a different order if you feel like certain ones are more vital to how you play, but that's generally how I establish those is the best to the worst as far as what will bring you the most power to that crew. Next up, we have the orange boxes. These are designed to add a lot of flexibility. These tend to be models that you don't need, but they will definitely help in the right circumstances or the right scheme pools, things that you don't necessarily need and you can hold off on getting, but they're definitely gonna help you cover the gamut of scheme pools, basically. And then finally, the red. The red options are purely optional. Red does not mean they're bad models. It does not mean they're not great models and can make really powerful lists using them. But red generally means these are things that are in the keyword or versatile models that are left that I feel like you don't really need them necessarily to make a really, really good list. So these are very optional. If you think a specific model is great for your playstyle, then by all means go get it. But these are ones that 
you really, I think you can avoid. All right, so with that said, let's get into the list. For the ancestor keyword, we're going to start with Yon Lo's box and then go with Eternal Servitude because this gives you a lot of the ancestors that you're going to want. You have Manos, who is a leaper, who can also ignore Demise with Lantern of Souls, and he can do min 3 damage at range. He is just an awesome, awesome model that can deal with a lot of problems. Then you have Yin, who is a fast scheme runner. Yin has move 6, flight, can take interacts as a bonus action, so really good backfield schemer, or anywhere schemer to be honest. Then you have Toshiro, who summons Ashigaru, who are one of the best 5 soulstone models in the game because they have extended reach, hard to kill, can injure, have a 2 inch reach, they're just ridiculous for their cost. And this guy summons them, now it's a little bit more expensive than it used to be, but it's still very useful to be able to summon them. And then he can also heal them, he can give them focus. Very good piece altogether. Basically, everything in this box is pretty useful. And this box with the core box is all you probably need to win. The only reason you go into the yellow box, which is Descendants and Guardians, is because of some of the combos you can do with Chiaki. And that's because Chiaki can take off the reliquaries without the model dying and put it on other models. And that's basically the only other piece you really want. Sun Quang is decent, but I don't think you really need him in this list with all the other models. And the Kamenu are armor 2 cheap 5 point models that if you have extra points and you just want some armor, the tar pit or that sort of thing, you can bring in the list as well. For the Foundry keyword, we are going to start off with Mei Fang's box, and then we're going to expand into Heavy Metal. Now, be mindful this is an Arcanist box, so you're only going to get use out of it with Mei Fang specifically for Thunders. You're going to take this box though because you want the Gammon and the Golem because they automatically generate scrap for you. And scrap is how you ride the rails and jump around the board really easily and efficiently with this crew. You generally won't need more than maybe one or two metal Gammon, but you want the one to get the engine going until at least you can get maybe other options with further purchases. The metal Golem you'll still want regardless because he is kind of your big beater model that is in keyword. Going into the yellow options, we have Bayou Engineering, primarily because of the survivors. They are fantastic five-point models, armored, hard to kill, and a 14-inch gun, so they can ride the rails and take 14-inch shots, so pretty useful models overall. The Pork Chop's also not a bad model. It's another auto scrap generator, so if you prefer to go for something a little bit beefier than the Metal Gammon, you can go that route, and it has some abilities giving other models around it bonuses. And then you have Sparks. He is an henchman. He's all right. He will be targeted down by the opponent in a lot of cases, but he can command construct. He can heal your constructs. And he does have hostile work environment, which can be absolutely brutal against some crews because it just shuts down their healing and other things like that if you can keep them alive and into the enemy crew. In the orange options, we have Lords of War. This is going to be a common box that you're going to see in a lot of keywords, and that's because Fuhatsu is just that good. A lot of people will say and bring him into every list. I don't think he necessarily is worth bringing into every keyword, but I think he's fine in Mei Fang's list, so he's definitely an option that you can bring if you want a long-range powerful gun. The Ten Thunders Brothers, on the other hand, they're pretty squishy for what they want to be doing, and so they usually don't make the cut in most cases. As far as other models within the keyword that didn't get picked, that's Neil Henry and Willie in the Explosive Material Box, and that is because Neil Henry, while he looks good on paper, he just dies very easily in my experience, and Willie is a Shockwave model, which is not bad. But the problem is shockwaves are usually an exponential thing. You kind of want more than one to really benefit from it. And I think him by himself is more a liability because he can explode on your own models. So you got to be careful with him. So I just don't necessarily think you're going to want him in most cases. For the honey pot keyword, we start with Jacob Lynch's box. Then we are going to purchase friendly faces. This is going to give you Gwyneth Maddox and two Beckners. They are going to basically help get your engine online by helping give out brilliance. The Beckoners specifically have lures that can reposition enemies. They also get a little bit tougher once the enemy has brilliance on them. They are a little squishy until then, but once that gets online, 
They become a little bit tougher. They also tend to stay back and support more than get into the fray. And they can also turn off interacting if they end up surviving long enough to do so. Gwyneth Maddox, on the other hand, is a little more tanky. She tends to be more of a tar pit model for your crew. She is surprisingly tough because of Soul Stones, because of Luck Thief, and because of various other tricks that she has. So she's mostly going to be getting out there and manipulating the battlefield by moving enemy models around. And she can start hitting pretty hard once the enemy has a bunch of brilliance on them. For the yellow boxes, you are taking Dark Dealings. This is primarily for Mr. Tannen because he is just obnoxious for the opponent to deal with. He makes cheating a lot more difficult. He makes interacting a lot more difficult. He makes doing most actions a lot more difficult just because he, he kind of gets into the fray and has all these auras that are just a pain. They drain a lot of extra resources out of your opponent's hand. And even if they do kill him, you usually don't care because of the amount of effort they had to put into doing it. And he honestly really isn't doing anything else other than being annoying. Then you, of course, have the depleted. These are models that you can summon in. They're basically cheap tar pits. So not a bad option, especially if you do have enough brilliance stacked on things. You're able to summon them in easier than some of your other models and then Mr. Graves, he's another beater if you want one. There are probably better options than him, though, generally speaking, because he's just generally not quite tanky enough to do the job you want him to do. But you can experiment with him and figure out if he's right for you or not. For the last Blossom keyword, we start with Masaki's Core Box, and then we go with Crime Syndicate. This is going to give you Yamaziko, two crime bosses, and two snipers, so it gives you a lot of options. The snipers are decent on the right table, so you're going to be looking for pretty open boards where they can just kind of shoot a lot of the table without having to move. The crime bosses are pretty good beaters for their cost. They have min 3 damage, they have charge through, and they have some interesting utility abilities like extended reach to protect your other models. They have laugh off so they can't be moved if you need to hold points. They can also move enemy models with their pulse action tactical, which can push things away. So pretty interesting model that has a lot of options that come with it. Then you also have Yamaziko, who also has extended reach. And there are three bonus actions that are all pretty good. She can either just nimble for a free walk. She can finesse to put enemy attacks on Maya Slips. Or she can buff up friendly minions around her to get pluses to their duels. Then she has a 2-inch reach is the other big thing, just because 2-inch reach, even though it's only a 2-3-4, it's just really good at locking down models and making it annoying to deal with her, especially with extended reach as well. And then she has Master Tactician. It can be brutal, depending on the circumstances of the game. Sometimes you can strip out some cards from the enemy hand, and that's painful for them, for sure. Moving from there into the yellow options, you have Monaco Ray and the Katashiro. The Karashiro are mostly getting summoned in by Monaco Ray. She's going to be summoning them off of Shadow Markers to make it a little easier to summon them. They are really good scheme runners for their cost, especially if they're being summoned. They're basically free. That's mostly because they have a 5-inch place that doesn't flip a card. You just do it. And that makes them so good at dropping scheme markers in the backfield. Do be mindful, though, they can't run strategies unless you hire them now. And then, of course, Monaco Ray herself can also create the Wanyudo, which is another good model. And she has some interesting, if you hit me, I hit you back mechanics as well. And then going into the orange options, you have Lords of War, of course, for Fuhatsu, who is not a bad option for the Last Blossom crew. Just a great gun to kind of support Misaki as she kind of pops around the board. And then you have the Thunder's Archers as the last box that you may take consideration of. They do have Chi because they are monks, so you can be bumping up your stats, which is pretty good. Now, I will say they are a bit squishy because all they really have is that Chi, and they can leap aside, but you're not always going to be able to get use out of that. But they're pretty good guns, 12-inch range, they ignore friendly fire, they ignore concealment, they go through incorporeal, they can blast, and they can also shoot off scheme markers from range. So they have some uses. I would just be very cautious about taking them because they are kind of squishy. 
for the monk keyword, you start with Shin Long's box and then immediately go into Lords of War because Fuhatsu is a monster in this list. He just complements very well with Shin Long. Shin Long can buff him, he can heal him, he can move him, everything Fuhatsu basically wants. Going from there, you're going to look at the Devoted Students. The Wandering River Monks give you great scheme marker runners. They are a little squishy, but as long as they can avoid those big damage hits, they will do a great job and they can play keep away very well. And then the Low River Monks are your really cheap healing models. They can just help keep Fuhatsu and Shenlong up or anybody else that you're bringing in to help beat. The next box is the Charm Warder box. They are great models because they're just good anti-tech against a lot of different things. They have Barrier to the Other World, which hinders summoning. They have Lantern of Souls, which gets rid of demise models without them triggering their demise. They can get around Incorporeal with their attack, plus it's a burst willpower. They can insta-kill summons. They can stack injured on models, and they have a bonus action that can just randomly do a bunch of damage to a lot of models if you just hit the right cards. So something you always want to consider if you face crews that have that tech. Then moving into the orange options, we start with the Fermented River Monks. These guys can hit like trucks, and they have a 2-inch reach. They are a little tricky because you do have to get the poison engine going, but it's not that hard with a couple of them to get a bunch of poison stacked on each other. And then once they have a bunch of poison stacked on them, you're basically ripping off the poison to make them hit incredibly hard. And again, like I said, that two inch reach makes them a lot tougher than they initially seem. And with Chi, they'll just have a stat seven for their defense. So decent model to consider. The other orange box is the Thunder Archers. These guys are a decent ranged attack option. They can blast. They also ignore incorporeal. They ignore friendly fire. Their main problem, though, is they're just a little squishy, so you got to be careful with them. Across the board, though, a lot of the monks are squishier, so they use chi to get around it, and you have more chi generation within the monk crew. Definitely a model you can consider if you think it's going to be more of an open field for shooting at range. For the Oni keyword, we start off with Asami's box, then we go into Ancient Evil. This is because Amanazako is just that good of a model. Your beater with a min 3 attack, but it also can put up hazardous severe terrain, which is pretty brutal against the right crews. And as a bonus action, just take free interacts, either Amanazaku can or another friendly model within 6. The other models to go with that are the Obsidian Onis, which are fairly durable summons that explode when they die. So you can throw these into the middle of the enemy crew, and if they kill it, which will take a fair amount of AP to do so, or at least significant AP to do so, like a beater. And then when they do kill it, it explodes and does damage to everybody and sets them on fire and kind of sets that up. So a good summon piece there also can be fairly, like I said, tanky, so you can use them to hold points and that sort of thing. Moving from there, you want to get your Jorgumo as a yellow box. These guys are your big beater summon. So whenever you got the cards, you want to bring these guys in because they can hit really hard, especially because of the flicker mechanic where they gain flicker and get a plus to their attack and damage. Plus they have a bonus action attack, which can just hit really hard. Great models for summoning and even hiring in some cases. From there, we have Immortal Tricksters. These are going to give you the Tengu. The Kamatachi is okay. It can do some card cycling tricks and things like that. Generally, I don't think it's necessarily worth it because it's so squishy. But the Tengu are great because they are a move 6 flight model. And they can also do quote-unquote free interacts. It's a bonus action to take an interact. That just makes them really good at getting summoned in, going up the board, and then dropping schemes in the backfield. Now, they are pretty squishy, so you got to be careful with them because they can be easily one-shotted. Moving into the orange boxes, we start with Karmic Debt, which has Monaco Ray, the Katashiro, and the Wanyudo. The Wanyudo is a great speedy piece, so great for running ley lines, that sort of thing. And Katashiros are good summons. Now, you don't need Monaco Ray to summon them because they are Oni, so Asami herself can just summon them in if you want a backfield scheme runner. Depending on the circumstance, you may go with a Tengu or a Katashiro. It just, Katashiro probably can do a little more damage if you want to do some attacking. 
If you want to double up on something, you can take Monaco, but I don't think it's really necessary. You mostly want the Katashiro and the Wanyudo. And then the last orange box is the Akanami. These are tar pit models. You're going to be summoning them into the opponent's face. They have a two inch reach and they can slow enemies. And that's all you really need them to do is just get in the way, be super obnoxious, just make it really difficult for the opponent to be efficient, especially with their bigger models. There's, of course, one last Oni that is Yasunori. He used to be an amazing model. He kind of got hit with the nerf bat, and you don't generally see him too much these days. Still a decent model, but he's just a bit too expensive for what he does. For the key and gong keyword, we start with Yoku's box, and then we go with Charm Warders. These guys, as we mentioned earlier, are just really good models that deal with a lot of problems. They have good anti-summoning tech, they ignore demise abilities, they get around incorporeal, they attack willpower, which is unique, and they can stack injured on enemies, they have a bonus action that can just randomly do a bunch of damage if you flip right. Just great, great models. Going from there, we have Hinamatsu as your other green box. Hinamatsu is a good beater model. She doesn't hit for min 3. She's min 2, but she has Onslaught, so she generally triggers with a lot of attacks because she's a 6 stat with plus flips. She's also a fairly survivable model, being a henchman and having armor too. Then going into the yellow boxes, we start with Deadly Performance for your Kabuki Warriors, which are another good attack piece. They have Combat Finesse, which is a great ability to keep them alive because the enemies cannot be cheating when they're attacking them while in melee, and they want to be in melee. They also have a 2-inch Reach, min 3, and they also have a Lure. That's very common amongst these models. The Kiangong tend to have a lot of Lures. You also have the Bunraku in this box as well. Not a bad model either. They are a 6-move model with armor 1. And if you don't kill them on the first attack, they have that disappear trigger to make them defense 7. And they also have risky maneuver. Take 1 damage, get focus, and push 3 inches. A great ability for a bonus action. Then going from there, we have Lords of War because Fuhatsu. He's always of consideration for a ranged gun piece. And then finally, as your orange box, you have the Kenochi. It's kind of more of a tech pick in my mind because tools for the job is something you don't necessarily need, but it's definitely a nice thing to have. They are disguised, they're nihilist, so they don't gain conditions. And you have I Got Your Back, which is pretty useful to grab and move things around as needed, especially when you're considering how much positioning and repositioning this crew can do. For the Wastrel keyword, you're going to get Lucas McCabe's core box, and then you're going to get one born every minute. I will warn you, if it is a very scheme-dependent pool, and it's something you don't have to stick around and fight it out with the opponent, it's a good list. You have so much mobility with your Hucksters being able to jump around all over the board. Because they have Secret Passage, they can also drop double scheme markers out. You have Desper, who has a leap and also pretty fast. These models, in combination with the core box, give you a pretty fast schemey list. Now, you don't want to be taking this list into a straight-up fight. That's where you're going to be bringing other boxes, versatile models, and stuff to deal with those problems. From the green boxes, we're going straight into orange. So we have Silent Strike, which is the Lone Swordsman and Three Samurai. This is going to give you some beefier models, some armor too, some ranged guns with the Samurai. And then the Lone Swordsman has a cool last breath ability where he gets pluses to attack and damage, gets to push and take a free attack. But if you don't finish off that target by the end of the round, you take a bunch of irreducible damage. From there, you can get Fool's Gold. This is an explorer's box that gives you Rough Riders and Cryptologist. The Cryptologist are okay models. They have some interesting abilities. Primarily, you can double trigger abilities that are start of activation things. For example, whenever you get a draw card by standing next to a marker, you can trigger it twice if you're next to a Cryptologist as well. So, got some interesting combinations you can use with them. And then Rough Riders are a pretty quick model that come in that box. They are move 6. They ignore severe train, that sort of stuff. The only problem with them is they are a 7-point model with 7 wounds and a 5-4 stat line, so they're really easy to kill if you're not very careful with your placement. Still, they do have a 14-inch gun, so they can stay away and shoot things. 
Then the final orange box is for Wonderlust. This is kind of a wasted box in the sense that you can't use the Bellhop Porter or the Alpinist because they are not in your keyword and in your faction. They are Explorers models. But you're taking this for Jessie Halliday. She is a mid-range support model. She can generate some soul stones for you. She can draw some cards. She can turn off interacting if you can hit them with her shockwave. But the problem is, if they really need to interact, they'll probably cheat it. So it's not a guaranteed by any means sort of thing. But interesting nonetheless. So very much a support model more than anything else. And that does it for this episode. Thank you for watching as always. And stay tuned for the other factions that will be coming out in the upcoming weeks.